Hi everyone, my name is Sheng Yu. Uh, I'm 25 years old, current, uh, currently a final year student in NUS Engineering. I'm also a member of the national basketball team. I think growing up, I, I'm, as, by the way, I'm the middle child. I have an elder brother who is outstanding and a younger brother who is also outstanding. So I think I was growing up with this middle child syndrome that people call uh, I was more rebellious, I was um, always on my own and just refused to be the good kid. I was I want, always wanted like, I don't know, I was craving all attention or what, but I was I wasn't the best, the easiest kid to, to bring up, like, I would say. So growing up I was always fighting with my brothers, always hitting them, teasing them and abusing them, scratching them until they bleed. Trying out badminton when I was in global primary, and then I think when I was in primary five or six, my father wanted me to. No, I wanted my father to bring us to the basketball court, the the one that I started playing basketball at, uh, just uh, around the neighborhood block 178, uh, just beside where I stay, to uh, give basketball a shot. Because my father used to play basketball, and then uh, he he used to uh, when I was younger bring me and my elder brother to just shoot around and experience basketball. Interestingly, I started playing basketball because uh, I was I was hyperactive. I was uh, I had a lot of energy and then uh, also wanted to grow taller. I wasn't the very tall uh, when I was younger. I wanted to, I was eager to grow, to outgrow my brother, and just be taller than him, stronger than him. Uh, so that actually started uh, was how I started playing basketball. And then it actually got hooked on very quickly within the first couple of weeks and. During that time, there was this uh, slam dunk anime that was showing on Channel 8 and also, I don't know if you know, MVP Ching Ren. <laughs> it's the Taiwan uh, TV series, uh, also about basketball. And so together with that, my, my passion for basketball just, just, uh, just grew like that. And then, so I was hooked and I really played a lot of basketball through that period from P5 onwards. It is, it is. Uh, actually, they going to the, uh, how would I say? I actually made the national team when I was uh, quite young. I made the national team when I was in JC, when I was 17 years old. So that was a surprise to the family already because before that, they thought I was just a casual player that was pretty good. And then, uh, so actually, they were surprised pretty much along the way. Like, I got a direct entry to Hua Chong because of basketball. And then, so they, they were taken by surprise because I was the bad kid, I wasn't a good student, my grades weren't that good, but I managed to make it to Hua Chong. So that was, I would say that is the first time I surprised them pleasantly. Uh, and then also the national team when I was 17, but actually we all thought that my basketball career would end after JC because as we go to army, I, was, uh, I went to OCS so we had to stop basketball altogether for one, one entire year. I thought. I had enough of basketball, I was going to do something else. And then after national service when I was 19 years old, I got called back to the national team and trained again. And then somehow the passion reignited and I was training quite hard. Uh, got, uh, got contracted to the Singapore Slingers for one year. And then after that, there was this huge announcement that we were going for SEA Games. Uh, when was that? Indonesia 2011. That was the first SEA game I, was, I played for when I was 20 years old. Um, I think my gratitude to them, I don't think it's just uh, limited to the SEA games period. I think it's, uh, it's really like unconditional love. I know it sounds a bit cheesy, but it's really how they, they loved me and how they, they were behind me in every decision I made. Like, they never once doubted me, never once questioned my decision, never once uh, wanted me to stop. Like, they get heartbroken when I get injured, when I break stuff in my body, when I, not, I don't get enough sleep, and I just get worn out, fall sick sometimes. They get heartbroken, but they never once try to force me to stop. They always, uh, they were always proud of me. They were always like, they were eager to show me to my, to their family and friends. So, oh, of course, uh, I'm actually always looking forward to meet him. Uh, he is this phantom character uh, in the Woodlands area. Everybody who plays basketball knows him. But nobody knows his name, nobody has his number. We all address him by uncle. If he shows up uh, on the basketball court, everybody will be bowing to him with respect. So that's the kind of character he was. And he still is. I think he's still hanging around uh, sometimes at Block 178. But it's difficult to catch him, especially ever since I got to uni. I stay in a hostel in the NUS. So 
I seldom go back to uh, Court One Seven Eight to play basketball, and I think the last time I saw him might be one or two years ago. <coughs> but every time I see him, uh, we'll try to sit down over some tea and then just talk about what's happening uh, in the basketball scene. He was very involved in the basketball scene. I believe he was a national player, also a national coach, also even played for the the senior national team when he was in his fifties. Right now, I believe he's in his late seventies or eighties already. So. Every time I bump into him, we'll try to sit down and have a nice conversation about what's happening in the local scene. And he even tells me what I should work on, what are the moves. And he will say, "Oh, I saw this on TV. I need you to. You should be doing this. You should be doing that." And at the age of 25, Sheng Yu has achieved an abundance of awards. He is truly a homegrown talent that grew up within the Sembawang GRC. This is the beginning of his journey as a national basketball player. We hope to see Sheng Yu achieve more awards and continue to the Singapore proud.